Hello, audience. It is so good to be here at Audience Edinburgh. Come, Ballmeister, it's final. Come on, you can do this. Right. Um, so this is my first time in Edinburgh. I'm originally from the southwest of England, from a little town called Yeovil. Any Yeovilsons in the building? Woo! Thanks, Dad. Sat in the middle there. Thank you very much. Um, and I'm at a crazy point now. I don't know um, if you guys get this well if you're at university. Uh, you go home in your hometown and you see people from school and they they become proper full adults. Like I just kind of watch Gremlins all day and eat crisps. And these are people where they've got they've got proper jobs. They got like ugly kids. I know one girl who can use a toaster, which is mental. <laughs> and actually, last time I was out in you, know, this is on Friday. Um, I was talking to, to one of my friends. Uh, well, he's a friend friend from friend from school called uh, called Luke Holbrook. And recently, he's become engaged to be married. Right, this guy's this guy, next year. This guy's gonna be a husband. Right, at school, he couldn't tell the time. <laughs> right, he joined in year ten. <laughs> Hopefully now he's got the whole time thing sorted. Imagine it'd be quite hard to organise a wedding uh, without the concept of time. Like, Luke, I've got the, um, got the wedding invite, mate. Just doesn't have a time on it. Just wondering what time, what time it started. The wedding uh, starts at a, a double hoop. <laughs> or double hoop? You mean the number eight? Uh, yeah, num number eight. Is that, um, is that 8 a.m. or p.m.? It's the, it's the moon, moon, moon sky. Moon sky? <laughs> Night time, PM. Say that then, mate. It's easier. It's only two letters, isn't it? Say that. And it's crazy growing up with him, because we both live in the rough end of the village. It was a kind of village where, when we were little, we used to make dens. By the time we finished, they're actually nice in their own houses. But you got chicken wire in here. Bloody hell. Is that a tuft of carpet? Got Lawrence Well and Bowen. Bloody hell. Brilliant. <laughs> Uh, I, I'm joking, I, like I slag Yeovil off, but I think it's great. And my friends, my friends say, James, what is so great about Yeovil? But people often forget that it is the Southwest's largest yogurt distributor. <laughs> and if that didn't impress them, they say, but James, I bet member Haven badly star Martin Clunes isn't from Yeovil. Tell you what, he bloody is. <laughs> Pretty cool. Um, and also, oh, oh, I've got to tell you this, like another, another guy from when I was little, a guy called Nathan Turner, um, he was one of those kids, do you have these kids at school who they'd also, they were kind of like bullies, but then at the same time like they tell loads of lies and stuff, I think they had like low self-esteem issues. Um, and this kid called Nathan, he used to tell loads of lies all the time. Well, they could be true, because um, I've written them down and you can be the judge tonight of whether uh, Nathan's lies are true or false. Um, they were all about his dad, um, I think he had a few paternal problems, his, his, daddy, weren't, his daddy weren't knocking around. Um, he was laughing at that. Right. So here's a few lies, uh, you decide for yourself. Line number one is what Nathan said. Um, my dad created a machine that can predict the lottery numbers. Um, the flaw in this is that Nathan used to have a plastic bag for his lunchbox. So <laughs> I'm going to say false. I'm going to say false on this one. And um, have you guys heard of the TV show uh, Digimon, which was like a late 90s uh, Japanese anime show with kind of like robots and monsters and stuff? Um, Nathan said, uh, my dad created Digimon. Um, now, I don't know why Akiyoshi Hongo would move to Yeovil. <laughs> maybe he loves yogurt. Maybe, maybe he's just the world's biggest Martin Clunes fan. I don't know. And line number three uh, is what he said. My dad invented up, joined up handwriting. Um, maybe, imagine like in, in like a science lab test tube, with handwriting. Um, I remember when he said this, uh, and this girl called him out and said, Nathan, that's not true. He said, yeah, it's true. My dad invented joined up handwriting. He said, you don't even know who your dad is. <laughs> Oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> but it's true. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, oh, yeah, so, so with this whole student thing, um, so I studied French at university, and this year, um, yeah, I just studied like French, uh, and this year I was um, teaching English in Paris. So it's kind of crazy, um, like, I haven't been at school for so long, and you go there and you're an actual teacher, and you have, like, jobs to do and stuff. And um, so I'd have, like, 20 kids in class with me once. I remember there was a case where I had a boy called Jeffrey who was being really bu badly bullied. Um, by the way, the punchline is going to be that Jeffrey, his name actually was Jeffrey, the punchline is going to be that he was an old English man the whole time. Like, it's all in French, I can't understand. Like, that was his actual name, right? So this little kid, he was like being bullied a lot, like I couldn't really understand it, it was all in French. So he was like, Monsieur, je suis bullied. Like, je vais aller au cinéma. <laughs> like, I don't know what he's saying. But uh, like, he, started cry he started crying and stuff. Um, so then I reported it to the teachers and I said, look, if, if Jeffrey's going to keep getting bullied, 
you know, I'm going to struggle to keep working here and I will actually leave my post and, you know, go, go home. And the teacher said, what an incredibly selfless thing to do, that you're willing to give up your job for, for Jeffrey and stop the bullying. Um, and then she said, well, what we want you to do now is we want you to, uh, to write a letter to, to Jeffrey's mum. Um, we want you to, to speak on the phone to the school principal as well to get things sorted and also have a meeting with the other English teachers as well. Um, it's quite a lot to do though, isn't it? <laughs> So if you go to that school, you'll still find Jeffrey being bullied today. <laughs> it's a horrible punch, isn't it? Uh, yeah, keep laughing. Okay, <laughs> thanks. For um, yeah, <laughs> so that's that. that, that. Um, yeah, it's crazy. Basically, so when you're 14, you have to choose what you want to study at GCSE. And I was like, if I do like French, I could like finger loads of girls in there. And then like seven years later, I like teaching in suburban Paris. And with an average of 0.8 fingerings per annum, I'd say it hasn't been that successful. Um, but uh, I'm, I'm single and I kind of find uh, the, the later you get on in life, the, the lower your standards get. And maybe like a few years ago, say to me like, James, like, what's your ideal girl? I'd say, she had auburn hair, she, she has a fringe, she always wears cardigans, she's very good at baking and swimming and, well, we both listen to Belle and Sebastian all the time and, she does really nice stuff, like teaches kids with alopecia how to ski, and and all these lovely things. Now, when someone says, "James, what's your type?" Say face, just that has a face, vertebrae, zero to five limbs, great. She says, "She says she, 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 she's got a face." She get her on, get her on it. Uh, <laughs> You have been really nice, and I love you lots, and I'm going to go away now. Goodbye!